Hey, ambitious dentist, welcome to Start Your Dental Practice, the show for existing and aspiring dentists to take your dental practice to the highest possible level. I'm your host, Jonathan Van Horn, CPA and ABV, founder of DentistMetrics.com. In every episode, we aim to demystify the how to start a dental practice problem by bringing on world-class dentists, influencers, and consultants in the dental industry to pick their brain about how to get past the barriers involved from going from no practice to being a practice owner to owning your own successful dental practice. Dental school is demanding and you're going to learn a ton, but the truth is you won't learn everything you need to know to be successful. Today's guest, Dr. David Rice, realizes this and he's created a community that teaches members the people side of the business. In this episode, he shares some amazing insight on little-known tips that are sure to propel your business and speed up the road to prosperity. So Dr. Rice is the practice owner of East Amherst Dental Center in New York and founder and creator of Ignite DDS, an education platform that prepares you for true success. So here's what you're going to learn about today. You're going to learn what you must know in order to become a leader, and this will help you develop great systems and stay on course. Why hiring someone with several years of experience shouldn't be top priority, as well as what to be looking for instead. An amazing tip to recruit the best talent from places you probably haven't thought of before. A major obstacle for young professionals that can be discouraging and maybe even crush hopes of owning a practice. A very valuable thing to have if you're moving to a new place. The number one thing to do if you're a young dentist looking to build your team. Something to keep in mind if you're intimidated by the idea of reaching out to people who are more successful than you that can offer you valuable advice as well as connect you with other great people. And at the end of the episode, you'll find where you can get an awesome bonus that will teach you more about how to be successful. So be sure to listen all the way through this entire interview to get access to that. Now, here's my interview with Dr. David Rice. Hello, ambitious dentist. Today, I have with us Dr. David Rice. Dr. Rice is a practice owner. Uh, he owns East Amherst Dental Center in East Amherst, New York, which is a suburb of Buffalo. Uh, he is also the founder and creator of Ignite DDS, which if you haven't heard of Ignite DDS, it's a fantastic, amazing resource that every single one of my listeners should be going to check out at some point in time. Uh, the It is a resource for dental students, new dentists, new dental practice owners, to help them learn all the things that they didn't learn in dental school, which is exactly what this podcast was created for. So we are super, super excited to have Dr. Rice on with us today. This is, has been a, uh, uh, we had to make the stars align for this uh, interview to happen. We are in April. I think we've been trying to get this interview together since November of last year. But every time we got something on the docket, something would happen where one of us would have to pull away due to an emergency or we got this, the schedule messed up me, mixed up or something like that so guys this is this is a, this is um i have high expectations for this interview and i hope you do too so dr rice thank you so much for coming on today hey thanks for having me so dr rice you have a a, a very interesting uh resource for dentists out there but let's pull it back a little bit and give us a little bit of your background uh, so that we can understand a little bit about who the mysterious Dr. David Rice is. <laughs> so I am a practicing dentist of 22 years. Can't believe it's been that many. Graduated from Buffalo's Dental School in 94. Went on to do a general practice residency in Pittsburgh, PA for two years after that. Did a bunch of cosmetic training out in California with a great dentist named David Hornbrook and, and have been traveling around the country ever since trying to just better my education from a business standpoint, from a practice management standpoint, from a clinical standpoint. And presently, um, gosh, I have one partner in the practice. His name's Mark Wendling. Great, great guy. We've been working together for about 17 years. We've been partners for 15 he started off as an associate pretty much right after I bought the practice. And we also have a 35 year tenured prosthodontist who um, we purchased his practice a little better than four years ago and integrated it into our general practice, which, you know, out of the box, 
from some regards, but a really great example of opportunities that exist in, in dentistry. So we've got a great team. Our practice is entirely fee for service, which is a blessing. We've got a great team of about 15 of us. So three dentists, four hygienists, and then um, the rest of our clinical team and administrative team. And it's dentistry has been great to all of us. And I love it. You know, 22 years later, I feel like I just graduated yesterday. <laughs> so how did you get into the, the ownership role? What, what thrust you into that uh, purchasing of a practice? Great question. I, you know, I started off as an associate a few times. So my first associateship was a transition while I was a resident. I was trying to make some extra dollars and um, learn some good lessons. So I did that part time. And then when I moved back to the Buffalo area, I found uh, an associateship with a part time faculty member that taught me in dental school. And I have to tell you, you know, probably a lot like many of your listeners, it didn't turn out to be quite what I hoped it would be. So um, I learned some lessons on what I didn't want to do and who I didn't want to be when I grew up and um, started my search for a practice to own so I could build a business and treat patients the way I thought they should be treated and do the dentistry that I wanted to do the way that I wanted to do it. So I guess my path was somewhat learning great lessons from some people and, and then maybe um, learning some what not to do from other people and realizing that the only way to have total control over my future and my practice and my patients was to, to be a business owner, to take the plunge. So whenever you actually, when you got into the practice, you purchased the practice, what were some things that happened that you weren't expecting? Ooh, I'll tell you, day one, here's my first uh, crazy moment was I remember signing, going to the uh, attorney's office signing stacks of papers to you know actually own and, and by the time i got back to the practice i already had fifteen thousand dollars in bills sitting at my desk and i hadn't picked up a handpiece yet nice so i did not expect that that was a little daunting um but you know you, you kind of roll with it and realize that other people have walked that path and done it successfully so why you know why couldn't i um i think a lot of the lessons we're all the things we hear in school, but maybe we don't believe. And that's that the dentistry actually is the easy part. It's the managing of people. That's the greatest challenge, whether it's management of patients or management of a team that you build and how to bring that whole thing together. Those are two that stand out for me. So what was your philosophy? What is your philosophy on the management of people? Because this is something we get all the time. The question is, you know, are leaders born or are leaders molded and created? What, what is your what is your thought on, on that? Um, there are definitely natural born leaders, but it is a very learnable skill. I would um, highly recommend you have to know what your big picture vision is first. And in order to lead anyone, you have to really know, you know, where you are and, and re really where you want your practice to go. Once you have a very clear picture of what that looks like, now you can share that with other people and develop great systems to make sure that you stay on course with your team. And, and I would argue hire attitude and um, train people the way you'd like to train them. So I, I was never really concerned with going to get someone who had 10 years, 15 years, 20 years experience. I was always more concerned with um, great people who are hungry to learn and hungry to be a part of something bigger and better and treat our patients well. So in, in the line of trying to find those people, do you have any insights for the listeners? Because that's a huge, huge area that people get in, you know, intimidated by, they get confused by, and are, are, are just scared by it, of the hiring of people based off of attitude. Do you have any insight to, to, to how that worked for you as a leader? Sure. For me, we, um, you know, outside of a dental hygienist who obviously needs to have a particular education in our practice, almost everybody else had zero dental experience. So I would encourage people, you know, we've all been to a great restaurant or a store or, you know, any place we would go that's a, a business and we walk in and we meet, you know, 
that person who just totally blows us away. And you're like, wow, they really did something special. It might have been big, it might have been something small, but you, you in that moment, you had that feeling like this person really gets it. So I always carry business cards with me, not so much for recruiting patients as recruiting future team members. And I really simply, whenever I meet one of those people, just say, hey, you know what, I'm not sure where life's going to take you or what your interests are, but if you would ever consider working in a dental practice, we are always looking for great people just like you. Hand them a business card and you would be shocked how many people make that call to you. That's an amazing tip. I think that, guys, if you're out there and you're, you're driving down the road, then you know, rewind a second and think about that one because it's, it's like Dr. Ross just said, you, you always find somebody that has gone that extra mile of, you know, maybe it's like you said at, at a restaurant or you're you know, maybe trying on clothes or something like that. And there's just that person that, you know, if they're, if you're like me and you know, you go once every three years to try and close your wife buys everything for you. But you know, the one time you do go and you got, you know, you just had someone that was very knowledgeable, they were helpful, they were patient, then guess what? That person probably is not, you know, they may be making $10 an hour doing that job where you may be able to give them a raise and give them an ability to to help you do a lot more. So I love that tip. That's a great tip. Uh, so is is that how you staff most of your practice now, or do you uh, use some of the, some of the other resources available, like the internet or anything like that nowadays? You know, it's interesting. So in Buffalo, essentially, it's a pretty small community. And I guess being in it for as many years as we've been in it, our practice culture has gotten a reputation in our community. So over the years, whether it's been a dental assistant or a hygienist or someone on our administrative team, people um, have, have reached out to us, which is terrific. And, and even though we don't hire new folks often, we always sit down and meet people. It's just a great opportunity to, to meet somebody who, um, even if they can't work in my practice, I sure probably have a friend who can use their help. And we just are constantly building relationships with people in the dental community. And I still go out to places of business and, and find those folks, the diamonds in the rough. And, and sometimes they come here and sometimes it's a few years later. And sometimes I refer them to a friend of mine, but they always turn out to be rock stars. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So, what led you to, you know, whenever you were, you were owning, you owned your own practice, what led you to starting and creating Ignite DDS or Ignite? Yeah, I, um, so I, in addition to having my private practice, I taught part time at Buffalo's Dental School for about 11 years. I loved it, loved, loved teaching. Um, circumstances changed at some point while I was there and I had to spend more time in my practice, so I couldn't afford to spend that time at the school, but I missed it. And I would go back to the dental school and guest lecture probably three or four times a year. And, um, you know, one day I went back and I just waited in the front of the room after I spoke and half a dozen dental students came up and we were shooting the breeze just about that particular seminar. And I thought, you know what? Hey, if you guys want to learn more, let me know. We'll set up a time. We'll go grab lunch. So I met about 10 of them at the dental school for lunch one day, and then we set up a dinner. And it was at that dinner I realized that um, I thought everybody was coming for the free meal, <laughs> in essence. But um, what I left with was, you know, four hours later, there were young people who really wanted to thrive and have fine, great success. So we started going to dinner once a month, and before I knew it, we had a few hundred students from Buffalo School, and before I knew it, word spread virally from Buffalo to another school and another school, and you know, we woke up a year, year and a half later with you know, 10,000 people who were looking for our help, and it just kind of morphed, and you know, I'm seeing dentistry even more, it's a, it's a great, I think I learned as much from young dentists and students as, as they as they learn from me so it's awesome so tell me a little bit about what you're seeing right now in the the people that are coming in now what what seems to be the prevalent cause of them seeking you out yeah so i think you know and your listeners will agree that um 
massive debt. It's a, it's a major obstacle for a young professional. That's one piece. Another piece is, and this can be really discouraging. The second one is a lot of the more seasoned dentists, the guys and gals who are, you know, early to mid sixties and above statistically are practicing dentistry 10 years longer than they did before. A lot of which because of 08 and people got sloppy with money and things didn't work out. So now they're trying to recoup losses and rebuild before they exit. And, um, you know, you combine those two pieces, corporate dentistry starts entering in and all of a sudden our profession gets a little spooky. So I guess our, our role is to show people that just like everything else in life, those are obstacles and they're overcomable. You just have to learn some lessons that school didn't have time to teach us. I tell, I tell a lot of people that if the market wasn't getting more difficult, then it probably isn't a great market <laughs> to be in uh, and not a great industry to be in because you absolutely, you're, we're seeing more com competition from an expanded base of number of dentists that are practicing uh, to corporate dentistry coming in with ex ever expanding debt loads. But luckily there, there's resources such as, such as yourself to be able to help people be able to figure these things out. Cause at the end of the day, that's what a business is, is figuring out all the, the problems, the, the, the little problems that come up and making sure you steer clear of the really big problems like the, uh, the, 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 some of the, the, things the older dentists are having to do now. Yeah. So, so as far as, as Ignite goes, what is, what is the process of Ignite? Our process is pretty simple. So people come to us in various ways. Um, some come just like in, in, in our dental practice, they get referred. So um, a young dentist group or a dental student group asked us to come and speak live we spoke and all of a sudden they tell 10 people 20 people so a lot of people come to ignite from a referral source um, other people you know find us on you know facebook or instagram social media wise and and, and really what we do is we have a, both an online and a live platform i'm still a firm believer i've learned my greatest lessons when it's one-on-one -on -one or you know in a, in a real room where we can sit down and really discuss things. So we often flip the classroom. You know, if we're going to meet a new group, we'll try to put some content um, targeted to their events on IgniteDDS.com. We set up an event date. We hit whatever city we're going to be hitting. We fly our team in, depending on the topic. Sometimes it's myself. Sometimes it's myself in conjunction with other people like you. I mean, you know way more about um, the accounting side of dentistry than I could ever know. And I don't want to <laughs> pretend to be, you know, I don't want to pretend to be you. So, you know, my job then becomes um, connecting great people with great people. So we run a live event and then um, the online platform continues to support. And then ultimately our job is to um, be a conduit from a student or a young dentist to the practice of their dreams. So, we don't broker, we don't take money or do anything like that, but we simply um, have great connections in any city, big or small, you can think of in the US. So when a young dentist or a student comes to us and says, hey, I'm moving to Dallas, Texas, or I'm moving to San Francisco, California, we link them with people who are either on our team or just other great people that we know, and they find them practices to purchase practices to um, associate with with a plan to purchase partner in so that's a lot of fun we, we connect an awful lot of people and that's really it's really gratifying it really is you know and the other thing that's really important and i've talked about this a lot on the podcast is that in the dental industry it's so hard to separate the wheat from the rye sometimes to be able to figure out who the good people are that you can connect with to be able to do things. So having a referral network is incredibly important to young docs because they don't know, uh, you know, you know, including myself, they don't, they don't know uh, me from some, from, from the, the, the first person that comes up as a Google result for, you know, dental accounting or, or whatever it is. 
Uh, so having a referral network is very valuable for people that are going to a place that they may not have ever lived before. They may not even know anyone that lives there, but maybe they're just moving there for uh, because that's where the in-laws are. Maybe they're moving there because that's a good place that they went to uh, for their lake trips whenever they were kids or something like that. So very, very valuable resource. Yeah, it works out great. And, you know, I just looked at myself. I didn't really have anyone in dentistry at all. I was the first person in my family. We didn't really have friends of our family. So, you know, me being a prime example, it took me a few associateships before I found a practice where I said, oh, that's the one, you know, for me. And I would like to believe that we can help people avoid four years of wasted time, which in, in essence was my life. You know, every time I picked up a move from one practice to another, I lost my investment in time, in those patients, in those relationships that I built, and I just pushed my my vision further out. So being connected to all the things you, you are right now, what do you see in the practices that are getting started? Or because you probably have a, a lot of communications with people that have, have started a practice in the past, recent past. What do you find that's working out there right now for people when they're getting into practices? Super question. So I would say um, from a practice model standpoint, the model that is, um, I'm convinced is the most successful model rolling forward is a smaller group. You know, unless you're a part of that big corporate structure, having a small group where a general practitioner kind of quarterbacks this, the group, and maybe there are one or two other general dentists, maybe there are uh, specialists that are partners in that group, or maybe they just wrote, rotate through. But that practice model, whether it's one facility up to two or three different locations is going to be highly successful moving forward. And um, from a philosophical standpoint, I'm still um, a huge believer in, in building relationships and the practices that engage people. Um, if you build the, I'm a, gosh, I don't remember who said it. Someone's a whole lot smarter than I, you know, you don't build a business, you build people. And then those people build your business for you. So we spend a ton of time in our practice and a lot of our network of highly successful folks are students of human behavior and psychology. And they understand how people make decisions and how to understand what each individual patient values. So we can speak their language because it's very different than the dental language we learn in school. That's for sure. So if you were going to be starting one of these, uh, these, these mini group practices, which by the way, I love that. I think that's a, I think that's a, a very true decision. I think that's, that's a, that's an area where you see, you see, I see a lot of people have huge success, uh, right now, just because you get the power kind of, of being a group. Uh, it's also, if there's any corporate practices in the area or thinking about coming into the area, you're a lot less likely, they're a lot less likely, they're, they're less likely to come into a saturated area. They're even less likely to come to an area that has a, has a, has a big group practice in it there, you know, group comparatively to a, you know, single dot practice doing a million dollars a year. Uh, so I think that's, that's very good insight. So if you were going out to try and get these relationships going, uh, if you're going out to try and, and get that group together, how would you, how would you go about getting that started? If, if it's me, and I'll tell you this again, this has been, this has been my personal experience. So I don't want to bias it for anyone, but when I found the practice that I ended up purchasing, I met uh, a group of people from Patterson Dental who were local to me and they were amazing. They were instrumental in helping me find it. They've been instrumental for the last 17 years, you know, since I, I did find it and they are an integral part of my team. So if I'm a young dentist and I'm looking to build a team, then I would get with people who understand our profession and understand the community that you're in. And the reps from, from Patterson, they're in and out of practices all day, every day. They see what's working, they see what isn't working. They, they understand trends and dentistry and um, they have been a major asset for me and, and they're a major asset for a lot of people that we, we work with.
Absolutely. So re reaching out to people in the in the uh, in, in the local area is what you is where you'd start out. People, especially the reps. Yeah, I would definitely do that. You know, on the dental industry side, and you know, same thing. If as you build your team, you've got to look to, all right, who's going to be my bank and support me? Who's gonna Who's going to be on my accounting team? Who's going to be on my legal team? And it's um, you know, ask your friends, ask your colleagues. Um, if they're reliable folks and if they're not, ask people who are already highly successful by your definition of success. Because I think most people have a little bit different definition of that. So if, if your view is different than mine and I asked you for your advice, like I get good advice, but it might not be great advice. So seek counsel from people who are already doing things the way you perceive you'd like to do them and, and you're going to be in great shape. What would you say to the dentist out there that, uh, that just heard you say to do that, to reach out to somebody and they feel anxious about doing it, or they feel intimidated about reaching out to, to, to another person that has already had more success than them? That, you know what? That's an amazing point because that was me. I was that guy. Um, I would say two things. First of all, good people really, really like helping people. So as anxious as I was, whenever I mustered up the strength to ask somebody and they were a good person, they were, they were excited to help me. They were excited to share their story, um, to kind of show me the pitfalls in their own path so I could avoid them. And, um, and if you, and if you hear that and it's still not you and you're still anxious, it's just not who you are, then, um, you know, send me a message or send me an email and I will email connect you to whomever you need connected to pretty much in any city in the country. So I can, I'm happy to be your, um, you know, the conduit to meet those people. So either way it works. That David Rice, the, uh, the, the, the liaison between a uh, successful dentist and, uh, and, and the newbie dentist. I like it. There so you yeah. And, and, you know, just piggybacking off of that, if, if someone doesn't want to speak to you, you know, another thing you can do nowadays, if, if you're super, super anxious, I, I tell people pick up the phone or go go to the office and just say hi, because that gets so much farther than like an email nowadays. Yeah. Uh, but if you're super, super reclusive and introverted, then, you know, shoot out an email. And if I promise you that person's not going to reply back with a, with a, an insult uh, about you know, your height or anything like that. They're, they're, they're not going to care. Uh, and if they do, then guess what? They weren't worth talking to in the first place. So, Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, so then that's great. You know, and the, the whole mentor mentee relationship is something that's very valuable, uh, whether it be a, a mentor or a coach or a consultant or someone that has your interest at heart. Uh, I think that's something that everyone has. I think uh, there was a study. Um, I can't remember what study it was, but it said that, um, the people that actually have mentors or have coaches are, are vastly more statistically uh, uh, prone to success than someone who just kind of does it on their own and kind of just looks around for everything. Uh, so being a part of communities, doing all those things are, are, are incredibly valuable. So another really good, another really good point. So, OK, so if you're moving into a, a practice that you, you we've said you're going to the, the group practices are ways that things have worked. You've talk, told us how you would start rounding up a group of people to be able to, to do that, uh, as well as being able to reach out to people that are successful in, in your area. What else uh, do you see right now as a way for people to be able to have a lot of success, you know, being, being a leader, things like that? We can tell each other anything and no one ever has to worry about the conversation not being, you know, wholly involved. And, and also, you know, I can kind of share anything that's going real, real well or anything that's going real, real bad without my next door neighbor hearing the message. And we all go through the same ups and downs. So, you know, learn from each other. It's to me, it's very powerful. One of my favorite stories about masterminds is uh, Benjamin Franklin was a part of a mastermind. And you know, think about Benjamin Franklin, he was an inventor, a philosopher, a politician, someone who, you know, helped shape the country that we're in. And he was he was very, very, very into masterminds and groupthink and, you know, the rising of all tides, the rising of tides uh, raises all boats type mentality. 
Um, and, you know, that's that's one of the things that every Friday night, him and other businessmen would meet and say, what is everyone doing right now? Or what what is working uh, and why? And everybody in the room would take a turn doing that. Yeah. Um, in, in study clubs, that that is not a, um, a, a discussion that would be very uh, prudent for most people to do. Or it wouldn't, honestly, in, in the end, for 99% of the study clubs out there, it probably wouldn't matter for the people that are there. Uh, but people have the perception that it would matter if they were to talk about, well, you know, we only did, you know, $80,000 in production this month as a practice, and we're wanting to do 100000 in production because that puts you in a place of not doing what you said you wanted to do. And then, you know, you, you internalize that everyone's going to think badly about you. But being in a mastermind is a way to be able to have all these ha- have, have these discussions for people that have all these ideas and have you have to leverage all of these, this experience. Uh, and I think there was an old saying that uh, that you are the average of the the five people you spend the most amount of time with. Uh, so if you're with people that have done good things and have you know are in the same boat as you, you're going to raise your internal average. So yeah, at masterminds are fantastic. We actually have a mastermind that we've launched through the podcast called uh, the Ambitious Dentist Mastermind. That's exactly what we try to do. Uh, we. Yeah, we got a, it's a it's a, a group of, of six docs, and we're actually starting here uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, the applicate I have my last application interview uh, right after this interview, actually. Um, so once that's done, we'll have our six people, and we're we're real excited about seeing where, where that goes. So yeah, that, that that's another another great point. So tell us a little bit more about uh, Ignite. Um, you, you, it works as a referral network. It works as a, a place to be able to, as a community, uh, and as a place to be able to kind of figure out some of the things that you don't know. Is that a, a fair statement? It's really a giant um, mentorship slash mastermind community. It's really, in essence, who we, you know, who we are, and um, it's great too. So I don't, I don't know if any of your listeners have an interest in speaking or writing for different. Um, you know, trade journals and dentistry, but we have an awful lot of young talent with that interest. So, you know, we not only taught how to build a private practice or, you know, how to navigate where you are in life, but how do you do something um, different? You know, what are different career paths in, in dentistry? So we've got a lot of up and comers, you know, five years from now, you're going to, anyone's going to go to a major meeting and see a lot of people who kind of got born through Ignite. So it, it, it's part of our culture to, to teach and give back and educate. And, and we inherently attract people who have that interest. So it's out there too. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So if you, if any of the listeners want to learn more about Ignite, how, how would they do that? Simple way is to just come to IgniteDDS.com. Once you've logged in to it and there's, there's no charge for you to be a member. Um, so, you know, get that monkey off everybody's back once you do that on your home page there's a, a green button that's you know says you can you know send david rice a message so that gets to me i have a team of people who um they will never read your message but they'll send me little great reminders on my phone like hey dave um do what you promised to do and um you know i tell everybody i'll get with back with you within 24 hours and um, some days a little harder than others because we get a ton of people but um that all, we always make it happen um, you're welcome to do that, or you know, people can email me if they want at um, david.rice at ignitedds.com. Whichever is easier for you is a okay by me. So, uh, of the things that we talked about today, uh, is there anything that, is, that the young dentists out there are facing right now that we haven't covered? Man, I, one thing that kind of sticks in my head is um, a, a, a new seminar we created called Making Bank and Broke. And I think um, you're probably see this more than you'd like, you know, most dentists are going to be successful by, you know, the American dreams definition of it. Some will be extraordinarily successful, but everybody's going to do just fine. One of the things we see now is people race out of school or residency program. And I understand it because I felt the same way, but it's that doctoritis of, you know, I want the house, I want the car. I want a vacation. I want that life I've been fighting for. And, you know, people tend to run out and maybe not make the most prudent decisions right away. And I would just encourage people to understand that your first 
three to five years out of school are the most critical years of your career. If you get off on the right foot, if you get great mentors, you make pretty solid financial decisions, um, you're going to leapfrog every single person who went out there and did the opposite, you know, lived in that short term moment instead of, you know, getting to financial freedom quickly. Because I'm here to tell you that dentistry is a great profession. It gets even better when you don't have to go to work. It's it's much more liberating than. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that, that's a fantastic point as well. Guys, uh, you know, we I'll have people come on and um, they'll have been making, you know, 500 percent what the average American makes every year. And they'll say that they can't get their debt to go away. They just it just every year it goes back to the same amount. They, they, can't, they can't figure out figure out why because they're, they're having to refinance every year it seems like or there's you know they've got one more piece of equipment they've got to buy so that's that's, that's a great point so what do you have what, what do people what what type of um uh how do you how do you educate people to be able to 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 get past that because that, that's got to be a lot of personal reflection uh as, as a part of solving that problem for a lot of people yeah we've um you know one of the one of the groups of friends that we network with, that's sort of what they, they do in life. And they sit back and they say, okay, so if you're in a position to, and you haven't made really bad decisions yet, let's teach you how to make some good decisions right now. And so you keep that, um, that philosophy through life. And you, buy, you buy the small Cessna airplane then, right? That's what you know, about the new one. Exactly. Duct okay. tape wings, whatever you need to do. Yeah. Really rough it. No, really well, you it. only get a 30 foot yacht instead of a 40 That's foot. It. That's it. <laughs> but, you know, I think it just depends on where you are in your career. So if I'm talking with students, we try to give them lessons on how to not get into trouble. If I'm talking to a young dentist, same conversation, but also, um, you know, bring them to people like you who can say, okay, from a tax standpoint, you know, how much money should I be putting towards my student loans? How much money should I be investing? Where should I invest that money? Should it be growing tax free or do I mix it up a little bit? How do I balance that whole thing out? And so it's, um, we try to bring those two elements to the table. And it's why I love working with young people so much because, you know, guys older than me, the damage is done. They already know everything is, is, is what I've done. So uh, they, and, and the reason is because they've experienced and they, they've messed it up. And they, yeah. they, they, they realize, oops, I, I didn't do that right. Yeah. Um, and so, but yeah, they are, but at the same time, they all, there's, there's quite a few that already know where everything that, went, that, that goes on. So, yeah. well, fantastic. You've been, a, you've been a great guest. I've really enjoyed the interview. Um, you actually have, uh, for Ignite, you have a, 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 it's called the Crush Success Guide. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you guys put that out every year. Is that right? We do. We put that out every year. So, uh, Dr. Rice has graciously given us a, a, a copy of this to be able to give to our listeners. Uh, and so all you guys have to do in order to be able to receive that fantastic guide, uh, the crush success guide is to text the word practice to three, three, four, four, four. Again, that's practice to three, three, four, four, four. It'll send you a message. It'll ask for your email address. You give that to us and we'll sh tell you exactly where to go so that you can download that for free. He's been very gracious to give that as a resource to our listeners as a, as a, as a way to, 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 to give to you guys. So we're very appreciative of that for, to Dr. Rice. And uh, is there anything else that you'd like to leave us with Dr. Rice? Gosh, no, I think we, we covered some pretty good grounds. I really appreciate your time today and for having me on. And um, you know, if you're a young dentist and you're feeling, everybody gets in those peaks and valleys, if you're feeling a little bit down, just there's been plenty of people who felt that way before you and There'll be plenty of people who feel that way after you and, and, and everything works out great. It's a great profession. You're absolutely in the right space and there's a lot of great people out who uh, are happy to help you. So I thank you for your time. Absolutely. Fantastic interview. Thanks. See you later, guys. A special thanks to Dr. Rice for sharing some great knowledge that really isn't covered in dental school. As you heard, being successful in this business isn't about how good of a dentist you are. Yeah, it's real important, but how you manage people matters even more from a business perspective. So as a bonus for today, you can download a free copy of Dr. Rice's The Crush Success Guide, where you'll learn more about great tips on how to make it in this business. 
So to get that bonus, simply text PRACTICE to 33444. Again, that's PRACTICE to 33444 or visit startyourdentalpractice.com slash bonus if you're outside of the U.S. You'll also receive updates on the latest episodes of Start Your Dental Practice, helpful tips for owning and running a practice, and promotional opportunities direct to your inbox. So that's it for today's episode, but that doesn't mean that the learning and implementation have to stop there. I've created a free report called The 15 Numbers That Will Make or Break Your Dental Practice. This report has been downloaded over a thousand times by dental professionals. So if you want your free copy of this report that's going to outline what the most important numbers are in any dental practice, and it also includes how to look at your numbers, how to set goals, has a whole slew of really important information that is the culmination of all of my experience as a dental dental CPA, then just go to startyourdentalpractice.com slash free gift. That is startyourdentalpractice.com slash free gift. And so that's it for today, Ambitious Dentist. Again, I'm Jonathan Van Horn, CPA and ABV. I'll see you next week with another world-class practice owner or consultant that will help you start your very own dental practice. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Start Your Dental Practice community. If you enjoyed today's episode, please do me a favor and go to startyourdentalpractice.com slash iTunes to leave your honest feedback and review on iTunes. It's going to help me create a better experience, a better show, a better podcast for you, the ambitious dentist. Your feedback really does help. Regardless if you like the show today or not, if you didn't like the show, let me know because it's going to help me create a better show and podcast for you. Lastly, if you know of anybody that would benefit from today's episode and today's content, today's guest, please feel free to share with them on social media or through email. 